Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. The wallet is bulging with credit cards, and in this video, I'm going to tell you what's in that wallet. But before I do, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already, and if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So we're going to talk about what cards I am holding right now, what cards are actually being used the most, which ones are on the back burner, which ones are probably permanently shelved. Now, I have to confess that these days, because of this YouTube channel, the cards I have and the cards I use are probably a little warped by the actual existence of this channel because I'm probably acquiring more cards than I would have if I didn't have the channel so that I can show them to you and talk about the different features of them. And I'm probably also acquiring some cards that I wouldn't have even gotten if I didn't have the YouTube channel just so that I can show them to you because they are, uh, you know, popular and noteworthy, and this being Exhibit A, the Apple card. I'm probably sort of on the edge in terms of how many credit cards I'm going to be able to get in the near future now because of the fact that I've acquired so many recently. I have a bonuses I'm chasing, a lot of, uh, you know, sort of first year deals that I am dealing with right now. So this particular video, when I talk about the cards that I'm holding, it's probably going to be very different from six months from now when I've already hit some bonuses or some things have sort of run out in terms of the uh, cards I'm using that maybe had no first year annual fee. So you're going to see something today that six months later, I'll bet it's going to be a lot different. All right, number one in my wallet right now is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. I got this card a little bit on a whim because I was testing out Chase's 524 rule to see just how strict it really is, and I ended up getting approved for the card, so now I'm not quite sure whether I love it or not, but I have a big sign-up bonus to pursue, and so this card is getting the majority of my attention right now. So in order to get 60,000 bonus points with this card, I need to spend $4,000 in the first three months of having it. I've had it for about a month. I've spent about $1,000 on it, so I've got some work to do. Now, I know I have a big uh, purchase that I can put on a credit card, but it is going to have some credit card fees attached to it, or fees in order to pay by credit card, so I'm trying to put as much of my everyday spending on the card as possible in order to you know minimize the amount that I have to use that has that credit card fee in order to get to the 4,000. So anyway, I'll get 60,000 ultimate rewards points when I reach there. Otherwise, after that, the card's gonna give two points per dollar on travel, two points per dollar on dining, one point per dollar on everything else. I'm not convinced right now that this card is going to be a keeper in terms of everyday use for me afterwards, but for now, I'm chasing that bonus. All right, now card number two, which pairs with the Chase Sapphire Preferred is the Chase Freedom Card. So the Chase Freedom Card gives you 5% cash back or five ultimate rewards points per dollar on purchases that you make in predetermined categories that Chase dictates. So every calendar quarter, it changes in terms of what you can get 5% or five points per dollar on. As I'm making this video, the 5% categories are department store purchases or uh, purchases from via PayPal or Chase Pay that have the Chase Freedom as the funding source or whatever you wanna think about it as attached to those uh, wallets. So. I don't do a ton of department store spending, number one, and I don't really deal with the wallet so much. I'm trying to run some more things through PayPal in this quarter so that I can maximize my five points per dollar, but this one is going to be a tough one for me personally. Now, if you can maximize, you can get 5% on up to $1,500 per quarter in the different categories each quarter, which means over the course of a year, you can get 5% or five points per dollar on up to $6,000 worth of purchases, which would give you either, you could think of as $300 cash back over the course of a year, or you could think of that as being 30,000 ultimate rewards points that you could potentially acquire over the course of a year. So for me, now that I have this Chase Sapphire Preferred, Coupling the two together gives me the potential option to take those points from the Chase Freedom Card, pool them with the points from the Chase Sapphire Preferred, and then a couple options open up to me that are different than, they, than what they would be if I only had the Chase uh, Freedom Card. That being, I can get a 25% boost on those points if I use them toward travel through the Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal, or I would have access to Chase's transfer partners, meaning that I could transfer those points into programs like United 
located in Southwest and uh, Hyatt and Marriott and some others as well. So for me, I've never really done this before. So having the ability to access these transfer partners is something that I am going to sort of experiment with. I haven't really done a lot with that. So I'm kind of excited to see how that works out. And if I really think it is something that gives me more value than just taking cash back, which is what I traditionally have done. So we're gonna see how that goes. Hyatt in particular is a transfer partner that I wanna do more exploration of. I hear a lot from people that you can get a ton of value from your Hyatt points, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio of Chase points to Hyatt points. So that is what I'm looking at. So the next card up is the Discover It Miles card. Now this is a card that is useful to me for now, six months from now, not so much. It is a card that gives you 1.5 miles per dollar on every purchase that you make. Those miles can be turned into cash back at the same rate, meaning 1.5 miles equals 1.5% cash back. 1.5% cash back is not that great of a rate, but in the first year of having the Discover It Miles card, or at the end of the first year, Discover will double everything that you earned in that first year, so that 1.5% cash back becomes a 3% cash back in the first year. So I'm essentially using this as sort of my bedrock cash back card. Anywhere that I'm not getting more than 3%, I can pull this card out and get it at the moment. The icing on the cake for me here was the fact that earlier in uh, 2000, I guess it was this year, in 2019, there was a special deal where there was even a upfront bonus on this card. I think I got 75 bucks if I went through a special Amazon link. So I got the 3% for the first year, plus I got the $75 uh, on the front end. So this card was a little bit of a no-brainer. Next up is the Capital One Saver Rewards card. Now this is a card that I have to admit I got mostly for the sign-up bonus. You could earn, I believe it was 500 bucks when I got the card initially for the sign-up bonus. So I got that $500 uh, sign-up bonus and then I've continued to use the card throughout the year because it does give 4% back on restaurants and entertainment purchases. I've used it mostly for restaurant purchases even though I can also get 4% cash back on a different credit card which I'll talk about in a minute but I wanted to at least reward Capital One as much as possible for the fact that they gave me that big fat sign up bonus to begin with so I am getting kind of close to the end of my first year with this card there was no annual fee first year a $95 annual fee is about to kick in. I do not want to pay that $95 annual fee. So uh, Capital One and I are gonna have a discussion on whether they wanna keep me as a customer and either waive that annual fee or maybe downgrade me to the regular Capital One card. But the uh, kind of short story here is that when this year is up, I won't be really using this card anymore unless that annual fee gets waived. And then finally is the Amazon Prime Visa. Now this card would never actually be in my wallet in real life because the only time I ever use it is on amazon.com. We have a Prime account, so we get 5% back on our Amazon purchases that we use toward future Amazon purchases. We do a lot of Amazon purchasing. Now I have to say actually the Prime account is a little suspect in my head as to whether it is actually worth it, but the 5% is better than the 3% that this card would would give if we didn't have the Prime account and my wife likes the Prime account and I like my wife and so we continue on. Speaking of my wife, her main credit card is the Blue Cash Preferred card, which gives 6% back on supermarket purchases. She does the majority of the supermarket shopping at our house because she says I buy things that we don't need. So she holds that card. It does have a $95 annual fee, also gives 3% back on gas and transit purchases. A very nice card. We easily make up that $95 annual fee. She also holds the Target Red card that gives 5% back on everything that you buy at Target. And then she's got some other store cards as well. I personally don't hold any store cards other than that Amazon card. Now there are three other credit cards that I have in my wallet that are getting neglected at the moment and those are the City Double Cash, the Uber Visa, and the Wells Fargo Propel card. The City Double Cash gives 2% cash back on everything that you buy or you can now get two thank you points per dollar on everything that you buy with the card. So this has been pretty much my base card for a long time but this year I've got that Discover card that's given me that 3% base. As soon as that one goes away, we will be going back to the City Double Cash as the base 
lease, the Uber Visa. The big point here is the 4% back on restaurant purchases. It has other good things as well, but that uh, restaurant purchases are where I use it the most. So depending on what happens with that Saver card, the Uber card will probably be coming back into play. And then the Wells Fargo Propel card, 3% on gas, 3% on a lot of other things as well, most travel and streaming services, all kinds of stuff with the Wells Fargo Propel. Uh, all of these no annual fees, so these are good cards to keep around regardless of whether they are actually being used or not, but all three of them good cards to have. So that is it. Like I said at the top of the video right now, I am chasing a big bonus. There are some first year deals that are expiring in the coming months, so the wallet I have today probably looks a lot different than it's going to three months or six months from now. I'm not exactly convinced that that Chase Sapphire Preferred card is going to become an everyday thing for me after I get the bonus, so I need to do some more experimentation there. I've always been more of a cashback person. I'm not convinced that the travel points are going to be better for me, even though most YouTubers who are very into their credit cards love talking about travel over anything else. I don't know that I'm going to become one of those, but I am going to do a little more exploration, especially on the Hyatt end of things. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews and we talk about other personal finance stuff, all kinds of fun stuff going on there. Thanks for watching. Bye.